How would you like to have an RFID microchip implanted underneath your skin? Or maybe an electronic tattoo that sticks to your arm or your wrist? Not only does it look badass and trendy, but it's also every bit as useful and complex as your smartphone. Now, I know it sounds like something futuristic or even something out of a science fiction movie, but guess what? The future is now. And not only does this technology already exist, but it's already being developed and implemented at a rapid and accelerated pace. As the technological elite finally begin to bridge the gap between our digital and physical identities. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one that has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here, Here is, is wisdom. wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. So how close are we to actually having microchips implanted under our skin? Well, according to the NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams, we might be a lot closer than you think. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. In medical news tonight, a chip the size of a grain of rice could save your life. I've just been chipped myself. Uh, it's not a painless process, but it doesn't last too long, not too difficult, minor surgical procedure. New microchip technology now makes it possible for the emergency room staff to find out about your medical history at the touch of a computer key. At some point, we're all going to have RFIDs. It might be even in our fingers, where they require it with everything on it. Instead of carrying credit cards or money, we will probably be implanted with chips. And now RFID microchips like this are being injected into humans. I'm sorry, sir, did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely, without a doubt. Our driver's license will be on the RFID chip. Our credit card number, all our information will be on this one chip. The chip is encased in unbreakable glass and is about the size of a grain of rice. The procedure is done with anesthesia and is relatively pain-free. It felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. The government has just approved the use of a computer chip that would be implanted under your skin. When complete, everyone will have a unique 12-digit identity number. If hospitals purchase this detection equipment, the system will most likely start to include more and more people in those communities who will want the chips. Wow. Interesting. Stuff. Everybody could have one of those one day. Does Google now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because let's face it, Here, we, we just... like you guys, but you're from Google. It may be true that 10 to 20 year olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo if only to piss off their parents. Forget mobile phones, your children and grandchildren may well want an implant instead. You know, when we check out at the grocery store, we'll be swiping our own arm over the scanner. And that will be something we feel we can't live without. It would be such a disadvantage to not have the implant that it essentially becomes not optional. Let's imagine a little bit what the future might look like if I could take your stem cells and put them on a chip, or your stem cells and put them on a chip. It would be a personalized chip just for you. <laughs> turns over but it doesn't stop. But the RFID reader antenna is here. So when I authenticate, the bike powers up. That's it. Imagine if some of these machines could be made so thin, light and portable, they could be attached right to the surface of your skin and go wherever you go. There's some very sophisticated device functionality sitting on my skin. Welcome to the future, specifically 
the checkpoint of the future. It is envisaged that the passenger will be able to flow through the security checkpoint without interruption. This is what IATA, which is the airline industry trade body, is hoping will become commonplace around the world. A sort of one-stop shop for security from the curb to the gate, as they say, with dignity. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that. Mark my words before your tenure is over. Mark my words, huh? More like the mark of the beast. Even though it is called a tattoo, there is no need to pierce or puncture the skin. Instead, the device sticks on. So what we can do then is we can take this device, laminate it on the skin. It occurs to me I've got them in my dogs. Why wouldn't I have them in small children, too? There are also several products available to keep track of children. Many of them act as emergency cell phones and tracking devices, with some even able uh, to display on a map the places your child has visited. They told you we're giving you a nano tracker chip? Uh, yeah. To think something so small can connect you to everything that matters. Because I'm in love with my kids' kids. Because my car lost control while driving. Because now I'm looking out for both of us. Because I have diabetes, but it doesn't have me. Because I spend my life in the ER trying to save yours. We are now joined by Brandon Gallups from the Freedom Friday radio show. And Brandon, you are a Christian and a biblical scholar. And I wanted to get your take on all this. We see this emerging technology that's on the rise right now. Do you think we are seeing the beginnings of the mark of the beast? Uh, Darren, yes. As you said, brother, I am a Christian unashamedly. And uh, I, I base my life and my views of the world on a biblical worldview. I compare everything against Scripture. And, uh, you know, I'm not one to dogmatically say that absolutely the mark of the beast has arrived on the scene, but with the technologies that we're seeing, the, uh, the RFID people uh, willingly getting implanted uh, and a push even uh, in some places uh, for maybe some forced implants very soon, I, I do think that that is right around the corner, brother. We could very well be on the horizon of that. Well, see, what's kind of uh, scary to me is we're starting to see a trend, and it's a familiar trend, and that is these executives from these, these technical corporate giants, if you will, the, the revolving door, once again, between these high-tech executives and positions in the federal government. For example, Tommy Thompson, he is the former Secretary of Health and Human Services, and he is now on the board with Verichip Corporation. And he is out there actively lobbying for the microchip implant. I'm sorry, sir. Did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay. Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary. Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO of Applied Digital. Don't forget to vote in our Squawk Back question. Would you implant or have implanted an RFID chip? Uh, they uh, slide it under your skin of your arm. You don't even know it's there. Then there's the former director of DARPA, who is now a Google executive. Her name is Regina Dugan. And I tell you what, she's about as creepy as it gets. She's out there promoting smart tattoos and ingestible biochips that are already approved by the FDA, by the way. And she's telling a very young audience that this technology will give you superpowers. Uh, what do you think, Brandon? Do you think that uh, an RFID chip will give you superpowers? Well, it certainly may at some point give you the uh, power to buy and sell. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that it will give you superpowers. Absolutely not. And, and you know, Darren, when we compare this to Scripture and we look and see, uh, you know, particularly Revelation 13, uh, talking about that the whole world will, will have this system uh, and that you will have to have it to be able to buy and sell, this system, this RFID system, is the first technology that we have seen that provides that ability. Now, again, I'm not saying dogmatically this is that, but it certainly has the ability to, uh, to, to become that very quickly.
Not only that, but they're, they're already planning. I know the United States and Europe, they've already got it in the works where you're not going to be able to travel unless you have some kind of biometric ID. And what do you, what do you think about that? I mean, what they're saying, and we're going to show here in a second where a CNN reporter, he says that you'll finally be able to travel with dignity. Welcome to the future, specifically the checkpoint of the future. This is what IATA, which is the airline industry trade body, is hoping will become commonplace around the world. A sort of one-stop shop for security from the curb to the gate, as they say, with dignity. It is envisaged that the passenger will be able to flow through the security checkpoint without interruption, unless the advanced technology identifies a potential threat. There is expected to be little or no wait time as a result of the enhanced speed at which screening can occur. So there you have it, basically a system which, if IATA has it right, will mean that passengers go from the curb to the gate in their language with dignity, without having to stop, without having to unpack, without having to strip, without having to be worried about being groped. Now, do you think it's going to be dignified to have an implantable RFID chip? No, absolutely not. It certainly won't be dignified and, and I won't be traveling. But think about this also, Darren, when, when we, again, when we go back to scripture and it talks about it by their right hand or on their foreheads, you know, obviously John, uh, who saw this vision, lived over 2,000 years ago, and he was using the best language he had to describe what he was being shown. Sure. So, uh, listen, the, the, the forehead, the biometric ID, that, that could be as simple as, uh, as a retina scan. And uh, we're already seeing these technologies being mandated in, of all places, Israel, which I think is very interesting. Well, and they're also, you know, they're subjecting children to this. I I've got a, an article right here from the Associated Press, right, where it's, it's talking about tracking school children through the, the Head Start program. They even have kids as young as preschool where they stitch RFID tracking devices in their jerseys, which are required, that these kids are required to wear these so they could track their every move. Meanwhile, in the UK, RFID chips are used to track children everywhere they go all day long. So picture this, you have Tommy, young Tommy, he's about 11 years old. When he gets out of school, he gets on the bus, they have him wearing an electronic bracelet, right? It kicks off a sensor that's on the bus notifies his parents through their cell phone. They get a cell phone message, Tommy is safely on the bus. When he gets off the bus, it notifies him that he's gotten off the bus. And then even when he enters the house, they are notified. So I think it's going to end up, if these kids are raised like this, it's gonna be an easy transition for them when they are finally told, listen, the bracelet comes off, now you get the RFID chip implant. What are your thoughts on that? I think you are 100% correct, Darren, because just think about this. Everything that we see that we now realize is evil, going back, uh, you know, the Patriot Act, the, all of the NSA spying and everything, listen, that was sold to us as we need this for safety. And of course, why not appeal to our emotions about the most precious thing on earth to us, our children? Listen, we can put this in your children and you never have to worry about your child going missing or being abducted. We will always know where they are. We can always find them when in fact it may very well be that this is the most evil technology we have ever seen, but it will be sold to us, just like you're saying, in the name of safety. We're already seeing that. Well, technology is definitely a double-edged sword because I could see there's a lot of advantages. Yeah, I would like to Absolutely. know where my children are and, and, and that sort of thing. And if they are ever to get lost, it would be nice to be able to track them. So they're definitely going to sell it that way. Well, I'll tell you what, if you think the federal government is not going to utilize this technology to track its own citizens, think again. Here's Attorney General Eric Holder talking about a conversation he had with Vice President Joe Biden about mandatory electronic bracelets for gun owners. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, 
the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. And here's another very alarming clip from then Senator Joe Biden before he became vice president. And this was during the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice John Roberts. Biden tells Roberts that he will have to rule on implantable microchips during his tenure. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement? There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. So even from a Christian perspective, obviously, we wouldn't want to get the mark because, well, uh, according to the Bible, uh, your eternity depends on whether you take the mark or not. But also, I would imagine it would be an Orwellian nightmare as well. We're, we're talking about a dystopian future, but an Orwellian future where Big Brother and the government monitors every single thing you do. Do you think that that's something that we should be concerned about? No, I definitely do, because you have to think, I mean, just common sense would tell us that when this time comes, when we see something mandated where they are trying to mark every person in the whole world, uh, whether that be for tracking or for buying or selling or whatever it is, it's not just going to be Christians, people like myself who are familiar with the word that say, wait a minute, we know what this is. There's going to be people out there who just common sense, uh, who may give no regard to the Bible at all that say, this is crazy. There's no way I'm going to participate in this. So, so yeah, absolutely. I think that we'll see both. And, and you know, the, the scripture is very clear that Christians are going to be submitted to this at some point. We are going to have to make this decision. Well, absolutely right. And uh, I just want to uh, do me a favor. If you talk to your father, who's the host of the, the radio show, and, and tell people where they could listen to you, where they can find the broadcast if they're not in Florida. How do they access the radio show? And I also want to uh, tell people these two books right here, fantastic reads. If you're interested in the book of Revelations and biblical prophecy right here, Final Warning by Carl Gallup's, I definitely uh, recommend these books. How do people find your radio show on the Internet? Thank you, Darren. It's uh, We broadcast live out of 1330 a.m. in Milton, Florida. Uh, you can find us on the TuneIn Radio app. Just search 1330 W-E-B-Y. Uh, and all of our podcasts are available for free at carlgallops.com. That's carlgallops.com. Just click the podcast link, and you can find all of our material at uh, www.ppsimmons.com. All right. Brandon Gallops, thank you for joining us. I have a feeling that uh, you'll be with us again sometime in the near future. Thanks again. Thank you, Darren. All right, once again, that was Brandon Gallops. He is the son of Carl Gallops, who's a best-selling author and minister. He wrote... Magic Man in the Sky, very good book, and also Final Warning. This is a biblical prophecy book. I recommend both of them. That's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed evening. See you back right here tomorrow. Good night. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.